Hi, this is John from Sonic Drive Studio. Before we go on, I'd like to ask you to hit subscribe and follow us on facebook.com slash sonicdrivestudio. As you may have seen, since recently, I've also been making videos for Slate Digital at their YouTube channel, Slate TV. I recommend going to that channel and watching some of my videos. You can also view them on my own YouTube channel, where I have a playlist set up especially for those videos. In this video, we're going to talk about getting good bass guitar tones with the Axe FX. I've been getting a lot of questions about this recently, so I thought it would be a good idea to make a video about this for you guys. We're going to be focusing on two main bass tones. The first tone is a bit of a lighter tone, and the second tone will be a bit heavier. They both have a little bit of drive, but for the first tone, the drive won't be really noticeable. It's just there to keep the bass guitar present in the mix. First I'm going to play a section of a song where I use the first preset, so you can hear it in the context of a full mix. So as you can hear, that bass guitar has a lot of mid-range focus. This enables it to stand out between the guitars and the drums. And this really helps to let the bass guitar speak. Let's take a look at the preset. Okay, so one of the first things to note is that I'm using a dual signal path. The top row is taking care of all the low frequencies, and the bottom row is taking care of all the mid and high frequencies, as well as the drive. We don't want the lower frequencies to be driven too hard, because we need the low end to be clear, punchy, and tight. One other important thing to notice is that the IRs you use have a huge impact on your sound. I like to use Ownhammer Bass IRs myself from the Ownhammer Bass Pack. They sound great, the frequency response is just perfect. I recommend that you check them out if you want your presets to sound similar to mine. I'll get back to the IRs in a moment. First, let's take a look at the amp block that takes care of the low end portion. I'm going to bypass the bottom row for you so that you can hear the low end of the bass on its own. Take a listen. So it's a nice fat low end. I'm using the SV bass amp, which is based on an Ampeg. If you look at the settings here, I'm boosting some bass, cutting some mids, adding a little bit of treble, nothing special. Then let's go over to the cab block. Like I said, I'm using an Ownhammer 4x10 MPEG SVT10 Fat Ribbon EQ file. Now to create the crossover from the bass to the higher frequencies, I'm cutting out all the high information above about 370 Hz with the high cut here in the cab block. I'm also adding a little bit of proximity with the null mic at 80 Hz. Then let's go over to the compressor block. This block is here to keep the bass tones nice and even. You should tweak this to suit your own bass, because it's going to sound different with every bass guitar. What I like to do is look at the screen of the X effects and look at the gain reduction that's going on in the compressor block to make sure that I'm not going further than about 3 dBs of gain reduction. 3, maybe 4 max. I have the attack set quite slow, 15 milliseconds, and the release set at about 50 milliseconds. The ratio is at about 2, and the threshold is set at minus 6.9. That's about it for the upper row. Now let's take a look at the lower row. I'm going to bypass the top row now, so that you can hear the lower row by itself. Let's take a listen. So as you can hear, it sounds really thin, but that's fine. We don't need any bass in this row. Just like with the lower frequencies, I'm cutting away a lot of information, this time the other way around. So 
With the low cut, we're removing all the low end under about 360 hertz. I'm also cutting some highs with the high cut. And for this row, I'm using a different IR. I'm also using an Ohnhammer base IR. This time I'm using the Ohnhammer UK Fat Ribbon EQ IR. It gives uh, the bass tone a bit of a fatter mid-range. I want to recommend experimenting with this. What I like to do is pick one for the low end, which is usually this one that I showed you just now. And for the mid-range, I like to AB these files here to see which mid-range works well for the song that I'm working on at the moment. I have a noise gate set up over here to remove some hiss. It's happening because of the added gain and high end in the amp block. And for this tone, I'm using the Fast Crunch amp. It tends to add some nice, bright, crunchy distortion. The amp settings aren't really spectacular. Just removing some bass, adding a little bit of mid, adding some treble. And I'm using the bright control here to add some extra brightness, as well as the presence control. Let's not forget that I'm also using the classic noise gate at the front of the chain. And if you put them both together, it sounds like this. Now for modern rock, you may want to do this as well, which is add an equalizer block at the end of your chain to cut out some low mids. I'm cutting out about two and a half dBs of 260 Hertz just to get rid of some low mid mud. Those frequencies tend to muddy up the mix if you have big modern guitars going on. With the EQ on, it sounds like this. I usually like to do this in my DAW, but if you want your preset to be a bit more mix ready, you can try this, of course. Now let's take a look at the second tone. This bass tone is a lot heavier and it has a lot more drive and distortion going on. It works very well together with heavy guitars. Let's listen to this bass inside of a mix. Sounds pretty awesome. Let's look at the preset. Okay, so for this tone, the upper row settings are identical to the other tone. Also using the SV bass amp. I'm using the same IR for the low frequencies, same compressor settings too. For the lower row, we're now adding a drive block to add extra grit and drive. These types of tones work really well for metal and other hard genres like hard rock and genty type stuff. Let's take a listen to this preset. So the drive block is adding a lot of drive and presence. I'm boosting the tone here with the Tube Screamer model, cutting out some bass to make the distortion and the mid-range sound clearer, and the levels also pushing more into the preamp. The amp that I'm using here is the Fast Lead 1. Input drive is set at about 3.7, boosting the bass back here, cutting out almost all the mids. Boosting some treble, removing a little bit of bright. I have depth set at about 1.3. The bright switch is on and the fat switch is also on. If you experiment with this row, you can get many different flavors for your bass guitar. Once again, another noise gate set after the amp to remove some extra hiss. 
and the cab lock. For this tone, I'm using the exact same IR as the lower frequencies. And I have the settings here set up almost the same as the other tone. Only the filter slope is set at 12 dBs per octave for this one to remove some extra fizz that we're getting because of all the drive. One final thing, just like in the other preset, I'm cutting some low mids here to make room for the guitars and to make the bass sound bigger overall. You can also do this in your DAW, but again, if you want your preset to sound a bit more mix ready for live shows and such, you can do this in the parametric equalizer block, of course. I hope this tutorial will help to get some good bass tones. Once again, please hit subscribe and follow us on facebook.com slash sonicdrivestudio. Have a great day.